going to talk a little bit about my journey myself and then I'm going to spit some ugly facts and then <laughs> I'm going to talk about the new Forest Act proposal. All right, so I moved to Grand Forks in 2016 and things were going nicely. And then in spring of 2017, my house flooded along with about two dozen others. So that year, that was uh, 2017, I had about a foot and a half of water in my house. And then in spring of 2018, the most catastrophic flood that BC had ever experienced up until that point uh, hit Grand Forks. And about 400 homes and most of the downtown businesses, along with farms and ranches in the area, were hit. So this is me. In my house in 2018, I had built a three-foot wall of sandbags around my house. I ended up with four feet of water in the house. And so uh, this is me showing the CTV guy how much water was in my house. Uh, the water upturned the fridge, uh, spilled out all the contents. So I wanted to find out why it happened. Uh, so someone referred me to forest ecologist Herb Hammond, who lived just over the mountains in the Kootenays. And he showed me an aerial photo of the Kettle River watershed. So the Kettle River watershed is a sparsely populated 8,000 square kilometer mountainous zone. And it's mostly crown land. And he pointed to the gray blobs on this photo or a similar photo, and he said, those are all clear cuts, and I knew. So over the next two years, I got together with other concerned locals, including retired loggers, and we formed the Boundary Forest Watershed Stewardship Society to address the negative impacts of forestry in our region. And I also traveled the province, and I listened to scientists and residents and politicians and foresters, and I learned that there are hundreds of groups like ours trying to protect our communities and nature from the negative impacts of industrial forestry. So there are a lot of dedicated folks volunteering to make things better for forests and people. Okay, so since 2018, the disasters have multiplied and the damage from industrial forestry continues. Decades of overcutting from industrial logging have resulted in enormous losses of primary forests in BC. Michelle showed a close up of this, um, their map. So this is, uh, the green is what's left of primary forests in British Columbia. Between 2001 and 2019, logging accounted for 3.9 million hectares of forest cover loss in the province. And when compared with most forested nations on a per capita basis, BC's record of total forest cover loss is by far the worst. In addition to monetary costs, industrial forestry has taken its toll on people wildlife and ecosystems. And the damage has been studied, examined, photographed and published by hundreds, possibly thousands of scientists, journalists and residents. We've got two documents that we're putting out. It's on our website. I'll show you the web address again. We've got our Forest Act proposal, which is I think about 25 pages. We've got our backgrounder document, which is about 25 pages. Uh, so in our backgrounder, I go into details of some of these costs. I'm just gonna summarize a few here. In 2021, BC was beset by three extreme weather disasters, an unprecedented heat dome, devastating wildfires, and an atmospheric river and flooding. A study found that the cost to BC's economy from these events are estimated to be between 10 million and 17 billion. 2023, wildfires in the Shuswap and Okanagan caused more than 720 million in insured losses, making it BC's costliest event ever. Uh, BC's budget for fighting wildfires doubled. From 2010 to 2014, it was 1 billion. Between 2015 and 2019, it was 2 billion. There's been a massive increase in fires in all areas of the province except for Vancouver Island over the past 10 years. And the escalation in the southern interior of BC is particularly shocking. The red bar right here. So BC is suffering from more fire, more floods and more drought. And the BC government likes to blame global climate change for the increase, however, the increase in the frequency and magnitude of these disasters and extreme weather events, although yes, in some ways it is linked to global climate change, it can also be directly 
and indirectly linked to industrial logging. The science has been done and it continues to be done. So most re recently, we've got the Chilcot and slide. Uh, in our Vancouver presentation, Dr. Yuna Salila talked about the connection between cumulative effects of forestry and the Chilcot and slide. So his talk is titled, What in the Hell Caused the Chilcot and Slide? We're gonna send that recording out to everybody. Um, if you signed up with us, uh, you'll get the email. And then we've got the ecological devastation. Ah, degradation of water including decreased water quality and supply for community watersheds, agriculture, and uh, for forests. We've got the degradation of soil, including moisture and nutrients. We've got the degradation of watershed hydrology. We've got a loss of biodiversity. We've got local extinction of species. We've got Canada's greenhouse gas emissions from logging, which are higher than that from oil sands. And then we've got the loss of climate moderation. And all this from a system that's not bringing returns to the people of BC. Herb mentioned a few of these things. 80 sawmills closed since 2000, and I think even more. Canford just shut down, what, two, three mills and curtailed production in another. Over 55,000 direct forestry jobs lost since 2000. Uh, only less than 2% of jobs provided by forestry less than 2% of the GDP provided by forestry. Herb mentioned this too. Um, David Broadland crunched the numbers and it's costing BC taxpayers 365 million annually to support the forest industry. 